The mastermind behind the Paris attacks has been killed, while multiple Nigerian attacks leave many dead, and CIA Director John Brennan blames Edward Snowden for the Paris attacks. Today is November 19th, 2015. I'm Kyle Bendis, and this is Like Your News. We start off today with breaking news. According to French officials, yesterday's early morning raid on a French apartment complex in Saint Denis has killed the supposed mastermind behind the tragic events in Paris last Friday. In a statement released this morning, the Paris prosecutor's office said that Abu Ud's body has been positively identified. By the time the raid ended, two suspects and a police dog were dead, eight were in custody, and five police officers were wounded. Multiple attacks less than 24 hours apart left at least 49 dead in Nigeria on Wednesday a day after Boko Haram was named the world's deadliest terror group. At least 15 were killed and more than 100 were wounded on Wednesday in the town of Kano after two suicide bombers blew themselves up outside a busy market. Those attacks came less than a day after 34 people were killed and 80 wounded in another market late Tuesday. No one immediately claimed responsibility, but the, in the incidents bore the hallmarks of Boko Haram, which is attempting to create an Islamic caliphate in Nigeria. The group pledged allegiance to the Islamic State earlier this year. Some U.S. officials say Snowden has had an impact, but analysts aren't so sure. In a pair of public appearances this week, CIA Director John O. Brennan made clear that he blames leaks by former intelligence contractor Edward Snowden for enabling terrorists to evade detection. Drawing a line from Snowden to the Paris tragedy is problematic, according to some analysts, because even after two years after the leaks, it is difficult to isolate the extent to which they cause terrorist networks to change the way they communicate. The revelations that were the source of the greatest controversy involved programs that would likely have been little value to, dis to disrupting the Paris plot, experts say. Many have wondered what Bernie Sanders means when he describes himself as a democratic socialist. The, president, the presidential Demo candidate <laughs> attempt, will attempt to explain his political label in a speech at Georgetown University today. The Vermont senator, who is second in most polls after Hillary Clinton, told reporters last month that he understands many people get nervous when they hear the word socialist and that he prefers to dwell on the Democratic part. According to his campaign, he'll also offer specific details on foreign policy, including defeating the Islamic State. The National Institute of Health has quietly ended the federal government's long and controversial history of using chimpanzees for biomedical research. Director Francis Collins announced Wednesday that 50 chimpanzees held by the government for medical research will be sent to sanctuaries. His decision came a little more than two years after the NIH decided to release more than 300 chimps at research facilities across the country and resettle them in more humane conditions. The NIH's decision in 2013 was a result of pressure from activists such as the Humane Society, the Association for Zoos and Aquariums, the Jane Goodall Institute, and the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Former subway pitchman Jaron Fogel is due in a federal court in Indianapolis on Thursday morning to be sentenced for his child porn and child sex convictions. In August, Fogel agreed to plead guilty to one count of possessing or distributing child pornography and another of traveling across state lines to engage in sex with a minor. The pleas were part of a deal in which prosecutors agreed to cap their request for prison time at 12 and a half years. Fogel is asking for five. Thanks for watching Laker News. I'm Kyle Bendis, and we'll see you on Monday.